Welcome back to the GSMC Golf Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. We're going back with our second segment of the night talking about the U.S. Open recap and superlatives. But before I get into that, I would love to remind you guys that if you would like to become a bigger part of the show than you already are, use the gsmcpodcast.net tips and donations link. If you want to ask me a question, you can put it in a box. It'll appear across the screen. And it also just helps out the creators here at the GSMC Sports Network a lot. Uh, without further ado, we're going to get right into this second segment, talking about the U.S. Open recap and superlatives from the U.S. Open, as we do after every single weekend on a Tuesday. We talk about who played the best at all aspects of the game. Um, but just for the recap, and we talked about it a little bit, but it's gonna we're, we're, we're going to need to start with Rory McIlroy. Going into 15, this guy had a two-stroke lead on Bryson DeChambeau. He bogeys 15. He misses a three foot putt on 16. And he misses a three foot putt on 18. And he melts down, as people are calling it, and loses the U.S. Open to extend his major drought past a decade. He hasn't won a major since the 2014 PGA Championship. Uh, he won the 2011 U.S. Open. Rory McIlroy at one time in his career was looked at as this guy has the potential to be one of the greatest of all time because he's so young and he's winning so many. Now Rory McIlroy is 35 years old. He has not won a major since 2014. He is still one of the best golfers in the world. But... You gotta assume, thirty-five years old, coming up on a rapid decline. Maybe um, I'd be worried for him. I am truly worried for him, and it's unfortunate because I do want to see him win another one. And I, I did want to see. I here was the battle in my mind on Sunday. I love what Bryson DeChambeau is doing, and I think that he is a fantastic. I, I think just he is a fantastic vocal leader for golf and for what golf i want golf the direction to go into and a win at pinehurst would go very far into you know it was going to get the topic of the u.s olympics that i looked at going into um going into the weekend that topic was gonna need to be brought to head uh of course the just official world golf rankings of course the fedex cup rankings he if if he was allowed to get fedex cup rankings i would think that he is in uh, safely he's in the top 30 just on these three major performances and then on top of that uh you know just you know everything that he's missing out not making not being able to play in signature events not being able to play just on tour every week um, I do really want Bryson DeChambeau to play on tour, and I think that it will be very important. And eventually he will, and I can't wait for that day to happen, and for Brooks Kepka to be back on tour, and for Dustin Johnson to be back on tour, and for maybe even Phil Mickelson, although he might just be playing in the PGA Champions events. Um, but nonetheless, Rory McIlroy, it was so hard to watch because that putt on uh, – it's here for me, it, that 18 putt was very difficult. And I understand how he missed that one. It was a downhill putt that broke left to right. And it broke left to right by two balls. It, he didn't expect it to break that much. I think he I think he didn't respect it enough. Um, I, well, I mean, it's just so unfortunate because he had... I mean, there... there could never be another perfect opportunity. He has four holes to play, and if he... If he bogeys two he's going into a playoff if he bogeys 50 percent of the holes he's going into a playoff let alone if he just if he gets a birdie at any point he's winning this u.s open uh, and it's on 15 16 and uh, 15 16 and 18 which are difficult holes but 18 is the 11th or is the eighth easiest hole on the course 17 ninth easiest uh, and 15 and 16 are tied for fifth hardest so uh, you, I mean, you have an opportunity here, and it's right there, and you can see how crushed he was after Bryson DeChambeau made that putt on 18 for him to win, which was not an easy putt, by the way. It still was about five feet, and he definitely could have missed that to force um, or to go into a playoff. Yeah, uh, it's unfortunate for Rory McIlroy. It's, you know, of course the conversation that we have to have, though, it, so close but so far as he loses out on another major champion 
now he, he, there is still another opportunity. There's the tour championship or the open championship that is played in Scotland uh, this year, I believe it is, which, of course, he always loves. It goes back to Great Britain, uh, where he's from, from Northern Ireland. Um, right across the right across the sea there would be the would be Scotland. <clears throat> so for Rory McIlroy, he'll have an opportunity here, but unfortunate we won't see him at the Travelers Championship. He said the next event that he will play is the the Scottish Open, which I understand that one. He's taking a few weeks off from golf. That's soul crushing. I mean, he plays four great rounds of golf. He's si- I mean, sixty five round one. I believe he was a day one leader. Uh, 72 on round two, and then 69 on round three, and then uh, he was on pace for a 66 round four, which would have had him win by two strokes. I, he could have won by three strokes. I, unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It it really is for Rory McIlroy. But I'm glad that Bryson DeChambeau won as well. So, going throughout the rest of the leaderboard, Tony Finau had a fantastic Sunday to surge to tied for third with Patrick Cantlay. Another great uh, aspect of this tournament it was Patrick Cantlay and Rory McIlroy in the final pairing on uh, Sunday. Of course, the the Ryder Cup uh, champion or the Ryder Cup um, controversy that happened last year it was a factor going into Sunday. Those two guys really don't like each other. Um, so a little bit, a little fun. To see those two in a pairing on a Sunday in a major championship, I don't, I don't think I saw those guys say a single word to each other all day. So, um, but Patrick Cantlay finished tied for third. He had after he was tied with Rory McIlroy after the day one lead. He had just three mediocre days of golf, 71, 70, 70, shooting par or over on the final three days. He definitely could have made a run, but um, that's just Pinehurst, man. That's this golf course. <clears throat> You're not going to be able to play. You're going to have you're going to have a couple of rounds that are just a little stinky here on this golf course. And Patrick Hanley definitely did. Matthew Pabon also had a fantastic weekend. He finished th- three under at solo fifth. Hideki Matsuyama had a fantastic uh, Friday that got him to two under. He uh, finishes even, uh, or he finishes two under sixth uh, place. Uh, at this uh, U.S. Open, Russell Henley, Xander Shoffley, Sam Burns, Davis Thompson, Corey Connors round out the top 10. Sergio Garcia at age, I mean, how old is Sergio Garcia uh, nowadays? I've got to see. Sergio Garcia is 44 years old, and he finished uh, tied for 12th uh, with Ludwig Oberg, who had a kind of blow up on, I, he was... Honestly, he was my. Of, of course, you guys heard on Thursday that uh, I had him winning uh, after Thursday. He had a good round two, and then he had, he had blow ups on round three and round four, seventy three, seventy three each day. So uh, his name wasn't really talked about going into that final day on Sunday and throughout Sunday. But he definitely had an opportunity, but just missed out. Other names that uh, stand out to me, of course, Brooks Kepka finishes six over, tied for twenty sixth. Uh, but Neil Shipley, of course, six over, tied for 26th. We'll be talking about him in our fifth segment of the day. He had a fantastic event. Uh, of course, it's six over, but it's still a good event. He finished tied for 26th at a major championship. Um, very impressive. Uh, but uh, other guys that stand out to me on the other end, Scotty Scheffler almost missed the cut. Jordan Spieth almost missed the cut. Both of them finished eight over. Both of them were um, pretty, pretty far back uh, going into... Um, Saturday and Sunday. Scotty Scheffler uh, should have missed the cut. Uh, the cut line just barely moved at the at the last second to get him in, and uh, he finishes tied for forty first. Um, going into a tournament where he was favored after the f- or he was second favored after the first day. Um, he never really looked like he had an opportunity to win this one. Uh, we'll see if he's able to, you know, recapture that major success he had at the Masters at the Open Championship. But he needs to start winning other majors other than the Masters. Of course, he has two Masters under his belt, but he hasn't really performed at the other majors yet in his career. So we'll see uh, at the Open Championship in Scotland if he is able to replicate the success he had earlier in the season at the Open Championship. Of course, he is still playing fantastic golf. He just won the Memorial. Not worried about his game where it's at right now, but maybe worried about his, um, you know, the other end of the game. But going into the superlatives for the weekend, um, I have 
off the tee with the driver is Rory McIlroy, of course, winning this one. I talked about it a little bit in that first segment. Uh, he gained uh, eight or a nine tenth of strokes off the tee, which is second in the field. He was second in distance, third in accuracy for first overall with the driver on the weekend. Second in distance, third in accuracy is insane. Usually, you see guys that have fantastic accuracy don't uh, have that great of distance. Guys with great distance have don't have the best accuracy. But no, for him throughout the entire weekend, second and third in the respective categories, very impressive. With the irons, I had Tony Finau, 1.866 strokes gained on approach, with, which is a full stroke gained over Rory McIlroy's uh, off the tee. Um, very, very impressive iron game from Tony Finau. That's really what separated him here and what got him into a second place or into a third place for this weekend. Uh, he was first with strokes gained on approach. He was um, he f- had two thirds of his he hit two thirds of his greens in regulation, which was fourth, and he was fourth in proximity to hole. So he hit a lot of greens. He put it close to the pin. Really gave him a shot at a lot of birdies throughout the weekend. Wedges. I have Bryson DeChambeau. Bryson DeChambeau with wedges is something I don't think I like. Truly, I never thought I would say that. His entire career, it's been it's been talking about that driver and how he hits his eight iron further than I can hit my driver in real life, and that is actually a true fact. I'm not too proud of that one, but <laughs> nonetheless, uh, Bryson DeChambeau, fantastic play with the wedges uh, around the green is something that I never thought would be an aspect of his game that he would be able to be uh, impressive at. But he absolutely was here, tied for tenth in all scrambling slash wedge stats pretty much but it's not just the stats um it's that bunker shot on 18 i saw that he gained an entire i i think it was like a like nine tenths of a strokes he gained nine tenths of strokes on the field with just that bunker shot on 18 which is absolutely ridiculous uh that basically means that everybody from that position bogeyed and he saved par somehow uh, it is the most difficult shot in golf a 60 yard bunker shot um he had no fear uh, and i actually remember I, I remember watching the u.s o- or i remember that i was watching the u.s open and i literally said out loud to the people i was watching it with i said that's a closed club face he's going for the pin because the the commentators uh everybody else that was watching was saying oh no you just got to get it onto the green try to two putt take this into a playoff I saw I saw in the club face how closed it was and that he was trying to go for a little bit more distance on it. Yeah, and he, he absolutely flew that. And just that shot alone got him the best wedges of the weekend, and I'm very, very comfortable with saying that. Russell Henley takes uh, takes away the best putter from the weekend. Uh, 2.426 strokes gained from the putter. That's insane. <laughs> uh Two point triple the strokes gained from his putter as Rory McIlroy had from his driver. Yeah, that's insane. He averaged one point six putts. Um, averaging anything less than two putts is very impressive. It means that you didn't three putt a lot and you were able to put down your one putts when they were close. One point six oh five is very great. It, it is way above tour average. Very impressive, especially on greens that they were playing on today. Very impressive, Russell Henley with the putter. I had my most surprising be Matthew Pavon. Matthew Pavon uh, kind of has come out of nowhere these past few weeks um, and has played some good golf. Uh, I'm gonna looking at his profile, um, playing playing some golf that I really haven't seen him play in his career. The 31 year old from uh, Toulouse, France, uh, has of course finishing third in, or fifth in this U.S. Open. Uh, he was tied for 12th at the Masters. He finished third at Pebble Beach. He was first at the Farmers Insurance this uh, year. Um, of course, cut from the previous two events, the PGA Championship and the Memorial Tournament. But still, uh, very impressive what he was able to do here at the U.S. Open. Very impressive what he was able to do earlier this year. Of course, winning a tournament earlier this year is great for Matthew Pavon. Uh, he is the most surprising and the most disappointing. I have Justin Thomas. I feel like he could have gone with a lot of guys. Scotty Scheffler would have made sense for most disappointing here, but I do go with Justin Thomas as 11 over through two days, missing the cut. Um, he, the, we talked about him uh, a few weeks ago. I want to say, talking about how his game's just not where he needs it to be. Um, he's pretty far off. 
after a pretty good year in 2023 and a great year in 2022. Um, but he's been on a steady decline for for the better half of a decade. So uh, we'll see if Justin Thomas is able to regain, you know, that 2022 PJ Championship performance. Or I mean, he even played great in the Ryder Cup in 20 or last year. So we'll see from Justin Thomas if he's able to bounce back from an 11 over through two days miscut cut at the U.S. Open. But that'll wrap it up for our second segment of the night. When I come back, we will be talking about uh, the Team USA Olympic roster has been announced uh, here. Um, on the GSMC Golf Podcast.